Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wednesday Chapel. My name is Miss Danielle. If you do not know me, I teach second grade here. I'm super excited to be here with you today for chapel. Uh, the last couple weeks and all for the month of September, we have been talking about leadership because this year, that's our focus, is our lead standard, our love, lead, and learn. This year, we're focusing on lead. Um, so we've talked about servant leadership last week with Miss Stephanie and Miss Nancy, and they sort of talked about what that looks like. They talked about the word humility and how sometimes the very best leaders serve in the hardest positions. Remember, they had the little basin for foot washing, and that's not a very fun job, but Jesus was the best leader. Um, and he did that with little to no glory for himself. And so we talked about what that would look like for us. We also talked about um, some different ways that leaders think and they behave. Um, and this week we're going to keep talking about leadership, except this week we're going to talk about how good leaders obey God. Um, the word obedience, obedience, that's a big word. And all it really means is that we listen to and follow a command. We do this all the time. It's nothing new. It's nothing scary. We do it all the time, especially at school. We come to school. Raise your hand if you have rules in your classroom. Everybody should be raising their hands right now. Everybody has rules in your classroom that you follow. And all of those rules help us to have everything run really smoothly at school, to keep everybody safe, and to help us get along with each other and to work well together. Well, the same thing with God. God has given us some rules to follow, some commands to follow for very similar reasons. He wants us to live life abundantly. That means the very best way that we can live. And he was so kind to even tell us how to do that in the Bible. Um, but you're probably thinking, great, okay, the Bible, yeah, we talk about that a lot here, but it's super old. Why do we have to still listen to that? Well, first of all, we know that God does not change. In Hebrews 13, 8, it says that the truth of God's word is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So it's really relevant to you right now, too. Just because it's an old book doesn't mean that it's not an important book, um, the most important book that shows us how to live our lives. The Bible is really old, but what's super cool about it is that God has protected the Bible all these years. It's one of the oldest books, the oldest, one of the oldest spiritual books, and it's the most owned book in the world. Pretty crazy. There's not many people that I know that don't own a Bible or have never seen a Bible or have never heard part of the Bible. God has been very um, careful about protecting his word so that we would know how to obey him. It's gone through lots of different stuff. Um, just like other spiritual books, there are some religions that have died out, but Christianity is still here. The Bible, the truth of the Bible, it's still here, and it's not going anywhere. Surprise. Third thing is because the Bible is true, and that God has protected it, we can know for certain that all of the issues that we still have in the world today, and we don't live in a perfect world, all of that has to do with the fall of man in Genesis. A lot of you guys are probably talking about Adam and Eve in Genesis chapter 3 right now in class. It's the beginning of the year. We typically start with creation, and we talk about the fall. And the fall has everything to do with history and everything to do with the now. So we're going to look at both of those things, actually. We're going to look at um, obedience in biblical history, so how people obeyed in the Bible and in, in history. And we're going to do that first. So in the Bible, all the best leaders in the Bible, and recorded in, in First and Second Kings and First and Second Chronicles, all the awesome leaders obeyed God. Imagine that. Crazy. And all the not-so-good leaders, they didn't obey God. Um, actually, if you are in third through eighth grade, if you have some extra time this week, um, I would really implore you to watch, um, let's see, what episode is it? Volume 6, A Nation Divided of What's in the Bible by Phil Fisher. It's on Right Now Media. 
Um, and that really gives you a great overlook of the book of First and Second Kings and First and Second Chronicles. It goes through the cycle of apostasy, which is a really big word for um, some kings that obeyed God and things were really, really good, and then things weren't so good, and then the people of Israel started doing things they shouldn't be doing, and then it was really good again when they got a good leader. So the Bible goes through all of these different things in biblical history, showing that these good leaders were leaders who listened to God, who obeyed God, and they were able to guide the people that they were in charge of to do the right things too. So that is one thing for biblical history. Another part is that God shows that he blesses those people that obey him. It's kind of like when you obey your parents. So when you obey your parents, what happens? Typically, there's like, thumbs up, you rock, thanks for taking out the trash, I didn't even have to ask you kind of thing. But when we don't obey our parents, there's typically some sort of consequence. Like you lose a privilege, maybe you can't play Fortnite, maybe you get a toy taken away, maybe no iPad time. There's typically a consequence or a punishment. It's the same thing with God. For those people in biblical history that weren't obeying him, they had a consequence and a punishment too. And that was no blessings from him. No blessings from him. Let's read in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 1 through 6. It says, And if you faithfully obey the voice of the Lord your God, being careful to do all his commandments that I have commanded you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall you be in the fruit of your womb, and in the fruit of the ground, and in the fruit of your cattle, and increase of your herds, and the young of your flock. Blessed shall you be in your basket, in your kneading bowl. Blessed shall you be when you come in and when you go out. And it goes on, actually, do you want to know, for 60 more verses, 60 more verses of how God blesses and blessed People who obey him. God promises that blessing to us if we obey him. So that was looking at it from a historical viewpoint. How the people and the kings of Israel obeyed God and God blessed them. Now let's talk about what that looks like for us now. Because it's still important to obey God. We talked about that a little earlier. The Bible is super old, but it's the most important book. So let's talk about some ways that we can obey God now. Matthew 5, 16 says, In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. What do you guys think that light that shines in us is? It's Jesus and how he lived his life. Jesus was perfectly obedient to God. And when we obey Those good works shine out through us and encourage people to live that way too. The verse talks about how they may see your good works. Good works are obeying God's commands because only God is good and can tell us to do what is good. And this is what I want you to, to be careful listening to. And Miss Nancy and Miss Stephanie talked about this last week too. Just because it says to do good, Um, so that people may see, doesn't mean that we are doing good for approval from other people. Like, ooh, there's a piece of trash. Let me pick that up from the floor. Oh, hey, 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 buddy, yeah, I'm picking up this trash over here to put it in the trash. That's not what we do. We do these good things for God because it glorifies him, it honors him, it shows that we love him. Let's read in Colossians chapter 3, verses 23 to 24. It says, whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward. You are serving the Lord Christ. When we obey God, we're not doing it for other people's approval or to show off in front of everybody else. When we're obeying God, it's about God. We obey God because we love God and we want to have a relationship with him. In 1 John, it says that those who love him keep his commandments. And I really want to tell you how to obey God, but I think that it would be a lot more fun if you and your class 
talked about that together and looked in the Bible for the rest of this week about all the different ways that we can obey God and all the different commands that God has given us, all the different expectations that he has for us. So you can go home and talk about that with your families too. Maybe your parents have some good ideas about what God says about how we can obey him. And if you think of any ways that we can obey God, I want you to come find me on campus and tell me those different ways. As for the rest of Christian studies today, we are going to do a challenge. It is the obedience challenge, and your teachers are going to uh, show you what that challenge is going to look like. Um, some of you guys have been given blindfolds for it. Kindergarten, you have a special activity just for you guys too. So look to your teachers. You guys are gonna have an awesome time. I hope that you guys make really awesome connections as you're playing this game uh, to what we talked about today and to God's commandments to us in the Bible. Um, in closing, I want to give you a special challenge right now. I want you to remember three important things from today. And when you see me around campus, you can come up to me if you remember the three things and I'll give you a special sticker. Ready? Okay. The first thing is good leaders obey God because it shows our love and trust for him. The first thing. Good leaders obey God because it shows our love and trust for him. Second thing, good leaders obey God because it makes others think about following God. Number two, it makes others think about following God. And the third thing, good leaders obey God because God promises to bless them. Good leaders obey God because God promises to bless them. So those are our three things that I want you to remember from today. And if you remember those things, find me on campus. I'll give you guys your special sticker. Uh, let's pray, and I will pray for all of us that God will help us to obey him and show us in his word as we look all throughout this week about how we are to um, act and how we should obey him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much that you have given us the Bible and you've protected it all throughout the years so that we could know how to live. Father, I pray that you would help us all to be obedient to you and that you would show us in your word what you expect of us all this week and that we would start to look more like you every day. We love you so much, Lord. We pray all these things in your name. Amen. Hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day, and I hope that you enjoy the challenge. See ya.